All right, welcome back to the second half of the um, lesson planning assessment and objectives screencast. So we just reviewed what the purpose of an assessment is. Now let's talk about what it all means. Um, when it comes to lesson plans, alignment is an important concept. Alignment means that your assessment, main instruction, and your objectives are all in full agreement. That is, your assessment corresponds with what you are going to be teaching in your main instruction, which corresponds with what your learning objectives are. All three have to relate. So it's very important that when you write your lesson plan that you're writing for alignment among all three of these. Um, one way that I recommend that you do that is that you um, engage in backwards planning. Um, and to do backwards planning, you need to start with your assessment first. You need to figure out what it is that you're going to use to figure out um, to assess students. And then you analyze that assessment um, to figure out what your learning objectives are. Um, I'm not going to be teaching you about backwards planning. Um, I'm not going to go through that process. So I just gave you the description of what an assessment is. I'm going to talk to you about what a learning objective is and um, and um, and then we'll go from there. Um, all right, so what is a learning objective? A learning objective is um, a list of thinking skills associated with your assessment. Um, it is the thinking skills that is required in order to do the assessment well. So you can see that if you do backwards planning and you start with your assessment, you are figuring out what are the thinking skills needed to do that particular assessment. And when you have identified the thinking skills needed to do that assessment, then you can figure out what are the instructional activities that promote those thinking skills so that students can actually do the assessment. Does that make sense? So we are focusing on the thinking skills associated with your assessment when we write our learning objectives. It's just being aware of what those thinking skills are. Um, how do you determine what the thinking skills are? Um, the way that you can do it is by performing a task analysis. It's that aspect that I am not going to go over in great detail. But the, the big idea is that you look at what your assessment is and then you try to identify all of the thinking skills associated with it. Your learning objectives, um, as I said, should focus on um, thinking skills. That means that the verbs that you use are very important. Those verbs should reflect cognitions, that is, thinking skills. Cognition means thinking skills. So you should be using verbs that reflect those cognitive skills. Um, there are many different cognitions that we do when we, when we engage in various activities. It is important that we identify the appropriate cognitive skills, and to do that, take some time and some effort to do so. Here are some examples of um, cognitive skills. So to formulate an um, argument, is a cognitive skill. Students will be able to formulate an argument, to use evidence to support um, an argument, to list techniques to express arguments, and to list techniques to express arguments. These are examples of possible cognitions um, that students could be doing. These are just a few. It's not the exhaustive list. Um, also to define theme setting and plot. Where do we get our verbs associated with them? Um, there's an article that should be uh, available for this week that I would like you to read. It's by Crothwell and Anderson. And it's an article that takes a second look at Benjamin Bloom's 
um, taxonomy of thinking. And basically it argues for a rearrangement of those thinking skills. But Bloom's taxonomy of thinking um, goes from low order thinking skills, so we talked about that already, the LOT, low order thinking skills, or a lot, and it goes up to high order thinking skills, or HOT, or hot thinking skills. And what we want to do is um, uh, within these taxonomies, so that goes from remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So these three are considered somewhat low, but each one of these gets a little higher. And these are all high order thinking skills. Um, so I want you to be familiar with this particular method. Um, I heard in class that you all have been introduced to the depth of knowledge as well by Norman Webb. Um, this also works. So basically he says there are four levels and he organizes them in, according to recall and reproduction, basic skills and concepts, strategic thinking and reasoning, and extended thinking. These are two uh, approaches that basically accomplish the same thing. But here I am. I'm a psychologist. I'm, you know, been trained in psychology, and so cognition is the main uh, um, area that I work with. And so Bloom's taxonomy is what I prefer. It, is been, it has been around the longest. He came up with this in the, early, in the 1950s. And it has stayed the course of time. Many people know about it. And in research, the older the theory or the um, research is, and people are still using it, the better. Because it has that robust quality. People find it to be relevant and people do research in this area. So I prefer using Bloom's taxonomy, but I do know that people do teach Norman Webb's um, depth of knowledge. I will be uh, encouraging you to focus on Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy. So based on that, there's some things that no matter which approach you use, you're going to have to um, avoid doing a point and place approach to identifying your verbs for your learning objectives. That is, I don't want you to just say, hey, um, I like this verb diagram. Let me just throw that into my learning objective, and I got a, an appropriate learning objective. It's not that easy, and I want to show you some reasons why. One, let's take a look at this learning objective. Students will be able to recognize the contributions of African Americans during Black History Month. Recognize is a verb that, um, I don't know if it's here, I don't think it's on this list, um, but it's a verb that um, you may find on a list um, of Bloom's taxonomies, and there's a, a ton of them on the internet, different ones. Um, you can find and recognize will be on it. And if you do the point and place into your learning objective, you may think, oh, this is great. But it's not because what you want to do is you want to recognize an appropriate cognition. In this case, students will be able to recognize the contributions of African Americans during Black History Month. Recognize has two meanings. One meaning is we want to celebrate. We want to recognize the work that people do. We want to celebrate the work that people do. Or it could be we want to recognize or identify or select um, the, the appropriate work that we want students or um, the work that people have done. In this context, it could be either, but chances are um, it's probably the former. We just want to celebrate the works of African Americans. So we don't want to use it in that particular instance. If we want to be more clear about what we want to write um, for our learning objective, we might want to choose um, the following learning objectives. We might say students will be able to list prominent African American figures, so they should be able to make a list of um, certain people who have done significant things. 
Or we can say that students will be able to explain the contributions prominent African Americans people made. So based on that list of people, they can say, oh yes, Martin Luther King did this, explain what he did, or Rosa Parks did this, or George Washington Carver did this. So explain the contributions. Those are more appropriate cognitions um, or thinking skills that we want to use in our learning objectives than the one um, up here that uses um, recognize. Okay, so I know usually about this point, people are like, huh? This seems like a little confusing. Bear with me. Um, my goal is to get you through this so that you can see that it, how it's um, better to do that. So let's look at these. Um, so in these cases, um, the verbs can be low order thinking or high order thinking. So take for example, students will be able to summarize the paragraph. Summarize and low order thinking could mean just retell what was said in the paragraph. So that's just remembering or showing understanding of the text. So that's a low order thinking skill. Or we can say students will be able to summarize Babushka's doll. So to summarize an entire story doesn't mean just retelling, it means highlighting key information. So to highlight key information means selecting what is the key information or what are key information um, from uh, information that is not key or significant or important. So to do that, that requires a higher level of thinking. It requires doing some kind of analysis of the text. So we're using the word. The word is the same, but it has a different meaning. One is a low order thinking and the other it's high order. Here's another example. Students will be able to identify the European countries on the map. So that's just basically labeling and it requires just remembering what countries are where. So remembering is low order thinking. But we could also have, we could write a learning objective that says students will be able to identify the main idea in a nonfiction text. In this instance, the student has to figure out which of these sentences is the main idea. And they have to evaluate which one is more indicative of the main idea and which ones are not. So that's a higher order thinking skill. So low order, high order. Both are using the same words, but they have different meanings in context. And that's important for you as a teacher is to know what you mean for these verbs when you place them in a learning objective. Um, what is it that you're really trying to get the students to do? So that you're choosing the right word and you understand whether or not it's going to be a low order thinking or high order thinking. It's also very important to understand that there are verbs that we want to avoid. And here are some of them. So um, on the left hand side are verbs that you want to avoid. On this side, the right hand side, are words that you can replace them with. So let's go through each of them one at a time. Students will be able to know how to conduct a science experiment. No is not very specific. It's vague. How, what do you mean to know? So another way to say it is students will be able to conduct a science experiment. Conduct means that there are a list of procedures that the student will need to demonstrate that they know how to do. So conduct, a list of um, a series of procedures to follow is the cognitive skill. To know is not very specific, not very measurable. Number two, students will be able to demonstrate their ability to find countries on a map. Demonstrate their ability is vague. It's not very specific and it's not measurable. 
It doesn't reflect a cognitive skill. To make it more cognitive skill, like we need to say students will be able to find countries on a map. Now that is very specific, it's measurable, and it reflects a cognitive skill. Number three, students will be able to learn about the water cycle. Clearly learn is not very specific, it's vague. We always want students to learn, but learn how. We could say students, want to, uh, students will be able to explain the water cycle. So now they're able to, um, to give an explanation about what the water cycle is. So I'm going to go through these next uh, five um, a little more quickly. Students will be able to analyze the story. It's not very specific, not measurable. What, the way to make it measurable is to say students will be able to state the theme of the story. Number five, students will be able to evaluate the argument. It's not very specific. Now notice these two, analyze and evaluate, are terms associated with Bloom's taxonomy. The headings, the major text um, level headings. But we don't want to use them because to analyze is is broad. How do I want students to analyze? I may want them to identify, I may want them to sort, I may want them to categorize. In this case, I may want them to state the theme of the story. So I don't want to use the broad category. I want to try to be as specific as possible. And the same with evaluate, I want to be as um, specific. So instead, I will use the word formulate. Um, students will be able to remember, not good. You can say students will be able to define. Students will be able to understand the story, not good. More appropriate is to say students will be able to retell the story. And then lastly, students will be able to create a poster, not very good. We can say students will be able to generate new endings for the story. So I would really like you to spend some time thinking about this if you're unclear during your questions to class on Wednesday. Um, it's important to understand the properties of a well-written objective. One is that they should be student-centered. That's why they always start with students will be able to because we're focusing on what the student is doing, not what we're doing. And it should be focusing on a thinking skill, um, identifying those thinking skills. We've already talked about that, that already. So here are some examples of appropriate, uh, well-written objectives. But there's another thing that it should do. Um, objectives should not contain an activity or specific product. Because we're wanting to focus on a skill, not on the end product. So I know that people usually say that learning, learning objectives are what, the student, what you want students to be able to do at the end of the lesson. And usually when you think about it that way, we're thinking about what is the end product. But in order for these skills, um, the learning, a goal of a learning objective is that it needs to transfer. So it's not just stuck within a product, it's a skill that can be used across many products. So to be able to identify a main idea is something that should be done no matter what the book is or the text is. So you don't want to be specific about what the product is. In this case, Students will be able to solve quadratic equations listed in the chapter. You don't want to have that because that's specific to the chapter. You want to just focus on the actual thinking skill, which is students will be able to solve quadratic equations. So usually they're short in that way and they're, um, they're not outlining the actual product. Remember, your assessment is going to describe the actual product. The purpose of a learning objective is to identify the thinking skills needed to do that product, do that activity. Um, so, 
I have an activity that I want you to do um, on Blackboard after you finish watching the screencast. It's a little mini um, formal assessment, but there's no grading associated with it. So I want you to go to Blackboard under week 10, and there is a quiz for you to take that's going to assess how well you are understanding these concepts about assessment and learning objectives, in particular learning objectives. Answer the questions on the quiz so that way on Wednesday I can figure out how to plan my lessons accordingly. So again, there are no points associated with this. I really would like you to take the quiz. It's about four questions, three or four questions. Don't worry, it's not long and it shouldn't take too much time. But it will give me a sense of how you are mastering the material. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in class on Wednesday.